hey, 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 everyone. Hope you're having a great day out there. So today will be quite an action-packed live because we will be going through Tesla's Q4, right? We'll be talking about portfolio moves. What is the bad? What, what no, you know, what happened in the bad? What happened in the good? And uh, we'll be talking about a little bit, a little bit about SoFi. Yep, a little bit about SoFi. So, uh, you know, you guys know the drill. Show brother some love, right? Show brother some love. Uh, you know, smash that heart button if you can, smash that like button, uh, or, you know, follow us on YouTube, right? Because you can see we've, we've been act more active on YouTube, right? Uh, with me and Andre, uh, you know, performing there and whatnot. Um, hopefully, you guys are actually still mindful of your portfolios, right? Because, you know, we constantly want to Post, like, that's why I'm personally constantly, you know, posting reminders, um, posting sort of mental models, because, you know, it's something that I personally share with the group and some of my clients, my one on one coaching clients and whatnot is that uh, we need to be more uh, strong, right, mentally strong at these times right now, uh, simply because, I mean, the market can F us up, right, the market can F us up. And the hardest thing to master actually is actually our mental models. It's actually on mindset because, you know, you can learn about strategies. You can know, you, you can be an analyst. You can learn about strategies. You can learn about valuations. You can learn about price targets. But end of the day, when we look at our portfolios, when we look at our net worth going down, you know, if when we look at our whole portfolio getting red like for example 30 percent or down on 50 percent on a position uh it can sort of f us f our mind up right so i uh, you know implore you guys to actually sort of uh think carefully about your portfolio positions think carefully about uh why are you buying in the first place right think carefully about your buy plan and what is your price target for that particular stock and yeah, just, you know, just kill it overall from staying strong, right? And sometimes not doing anything is the best thing, right? We can be patient. We don't have to do anything in particular. We don't even have to trade, right? Sometimes. So I'm just going to be like, I'm going to be discussing on what I'm I personally doing for my portfolio. And um, yeah, I'm just going to be, you know, uh, uh, going, going more in sorry, microphone select microphone okay sorry i thought i got my headset on okay now anyway moving on yeah moving on guys let me share uh, share there we go no i got the wrong share i'm gonna share my tesla yep there we go so let's move on to tesla Right? Why do I personally think this is a blowout quarter? And it's insane, right? If we think about it as a, uh, if we look, you know, we walk down back memory lane and if we look at them, um, let me just, okay. So I want to walk down memory lane a little bit, okay? Uh, you guys don't want to drill, right? Click hashtag live if you're here right now so that I know you're here and uh, if you're watching this on replay, click hashtag replay. We can actually have a very meaningful conversation. That's why I personally go live. We can actually have a chat on whatnot, right? Um, so what I want to talk about is uh, walk down memory lane on Tesla. And two, you know, I want to be reminiscing sort of what happened in two years, right? 20, three years, 2019. So in 2019, they a lot, a lot of people don't know that they nearly went bankrupt, Right. To supply, to constantly burn cash and funnel in money to support the Model 3 while producing the Model 3, they, from 2017 to 2019, they nearly got bankrupt, okay? And it's a close call. I mean, it's crazy. A lot of people don't know it, but it's true, right? You can actually just Google that. And they were running out of cash. They were running out of cash. They were they were burning a lot of money, so they needed to raise two B, two point three B in uh, you know USD. That's because they promised Gigafactory in Shanghai. That's that's because they promised uh, robo taxis, right? They are actually promising us robo taxis, and they said that by twenty twenty there'll be one million robo taxis in you know the road. Now, why is that BS? Because you need to go through you know 
in order for the robo taxis to generate revenue for you, you'll need to sort of uh, uh, go, you know, go through regulatory approvals. You'll need a lot of things, right? There's so many safety tests. You need to be commercialized, right? So every inch of every direction and enough, you know, no doubt they have billion miles of data on FSD, but you still need a very significant amount of, uh, you know, testing. So that's why that is impossible. But the reason why I went into Tesla is because of, obviously because of Elon Musk at the time. You look at the financials, seriously, you look at the financials, fail. You look at the qualitatives or whatnot. Well, qualitative is the only reason we are investing in Tesla. Let's put it that way, right? They got innovation, they got tech, EV is the future, blah, blah, blah. But if you look, if you are a value investor at that time, you look at numbers, you look at everything will be fail, right? Everything fails. So why am I bringing this up? It's because at, in just three years, that happened, right? In just three years, that happened. But fast forward to today, with beta FSD vehicles at 60,000 right now, with billion miles of data, what is the likelihood of FSD actually, and especially them concentrating on FSD this year, what is the likelihood of their revenues coming in from FSD today? Right? This year, not today, sorry. This year or next year. What is the likelihood of that? And think about it. When they were pitching in 2019, they said that, right, the concept is you, uh, you park your car, the car drives itself. And they were promising like an ecosystem, right? It's a ride-sharing app. What he worked out was after profit-sharing, the user of a Tesla will generate revenue on its own and earn 30,000 USD. Uh, where when a Tesla car costs 60K, right? 60,000, you can get your money back in two years. That's the concept, right? That's what he's selling. And it's not far-fetched. Three years ago, it could be far-fetched, right? Three years ago, people are thinking, you're not even an EV company yet. You're not even ramping up yet. So why, why would I buy into your company? But right now, and this is a game changer, Right now, we can shut all the value investors up. We can obviously shut all the haters up. As, I mean, it doesn't matter, actually. We, don't, we have nothing to prove to them. But my point is, the progress that they have been and reaching towards you know, where they are today is crazy, right? So I'm going to look at that. That's why I want to walk down memory lane because three years ago is different. Now is different. Imagine three years later some more. Right. If our money is investing in a high growth company with quality and got progress with, you know, healthy balance sheet, shouldn't we be investing in these type of companies right now? Especially if, like just now we mentioned portfolio, you know, mindful of our portfolios, shouldn't we be investing, especially if our money can be there for three years or more? Right. We don't need to touch them and don't need to be affected by emergency funds don't need to be affected by anything, right? Monthly cash flow is still strong from your job or side hustles or whatever it is. Shouldn't we be investing in these uh, companies, right? So that's the, that's the ultimate question that I want to uh, ask because a lot of people look at, okay, is Tesla overvalued, right? Or is Tesla undervalued? Yeah, so these are the things that I want to talk about. Now, <clears throat> just to make sure I've got a bright screen. Okay, so we got the highlights, Okay, we got highlights right now. Uh, at OPEX of 2.8B in Q4, in total, a 1.5B increase in cash and cash equivalents, right? In Q4, putting their cash in the bank right now to be 17.6B. This is a milestone again, right? Profitability, 2.6B gap operating income, 14.7% operating margin in Q4. Now, it took some time to actually look at Toyota. Toyota's operating margin. Guess what? 11.9%. When Elon said that it's the industry standard, industry high, I was actually curious. I was like, wait, industry high? Damn, is that true? So I searched up Toyota's recent quarter, 11.9%. Net income, 11 billion. Well, no, sorry. In net income, one point five billion for the quarter. Sorry, uh, revenue, revenue at one, 
revenue at two rev I, I need to check back. Sorry. Uh let me see. Going back to history. Well, it's below, let's put it that way. It's below Tesla. Okay. And it's below by a mile. I did a video on it. I have my, you know, I have a YouTube, you can go check it out. Um, I did a video on it. But my point is, let me go over here. My point is legacy automakers right now, and I, I don't want to be comparing with them. I mean, they it's a totally different story. But looking at it as a value investing, because, you know, value investors, they say, oh, you know what? Tesla is not a car company. Uh, it's just a car company. Tesla is overvalued because of 100 PE. Tesla is this and that. But the recent quarter, actually, it's a breakthrough. It's a huge breakthrough. Seriously. Why? Because if you want to be looking at it as a value investment, it, the numbers prove that it can be. If you want to be looking at it as a high growth company, the numbers and everything, the progress and qualitative actually proves it to be, right? That's why I'm walking down memory lane. That's why I'm trying to say that, hey, three years time, they can achieve such you know, amazing feats. Three years more, what are they going to be? The future is faster than we think, guys. I'm not even, seriously, I'm not even surprised if FSD rolls out this year, but obviously they need to get significant testing and whatnot, right? But the power of FSD and the new revenues that you know RoboTaxi can generate is just insane. They're gonna put out, they're gonna put Uber out of business. They're gonna put Grab out of business. Like, who is Uber? That's what I gotta say, right? So then we got 2.3 B gap net income. Okay. Everything is record quarter, right? Record revenues, record net income, record, you know, margins, everything. Yeah. 30.6 gap automotive gross margin. Right, so their operations, they analyzed vehicle production run rate of one point two two million in Q four. Analyzed production run rate, right? That's a lot for them right now. It's high, it's record high. So twenty twenty one was a breakthrough year of Tesla when everything they everything has is going against them, right? All the headwinds going against them in terms of supply chain disruptions, chip shortage. What is chip shortage for Tesla? It's nothing, right? They've been proving on and on again uh, that they, they can beat them, right? They are more efficient footprint-wise in terms of how many produ uh, you know, production of car, the number of cars that can be produced versus the square footage of uh, a gigafactory. They are more efficient, yeah? Uh, they have produced more cars, than legacy automakers because of supply chain disruptions and chip shortage, right? So, I mean, they are saying that they are better than an ICE company. They are better than an ICE company. It's not really a car company anymore. It's the AI company, right? So there should be no longer be, there should no longer be doubt about the viability and profitability of EVs. He's actually pushing up all other EV cars, car makers as well, and saying that, okay, we have been around for a decade we have going through all the hurdles, right? Battery costs, right? Whatever, innovation, automation, streamlining, lean. Tesla is so lean. Tesla, we can see in the numbers later, right? So with our deliveries up 87% in 2021. That's insane, okay? Call, uh, people, you know, say that, okay, they're one trillion market cap. It's crazy. They're overvalued. But we got a trillion dollar market cap right now growing 71% revenues year over year, right? Delivery is up 87%. Now, the beauty about Tesla is that they do not have to fight into that red ocean landscape of, okay, I am uh, like Toyota supplies, you know, rev they have rev uh, deliveries of 9 million a year, right? So there's a question that my, you know, client asked me, he was asking, so what will, will you be, is it a problem if, let's say, Tesla doesn't sell and demand remains low? The beauty is they all they have to do, because they're so lean, because they're so concentrated and streamlined, is that they need they just need to be selling one million, two million, right, to be having a breakthrough to achieve fifty PE and more, thirty PE in the future. I'm not surprised if it reaches thirty PE, but the beauty is similar to Apple. You know, back then in 2019, Apple was valued at below 19 PE, at 15 PE. Apple, guys. 
because that they were having software revenues, they were having software earnings, right? Which eventually, you know, I think it represented close to 30% of their total revenues. And the margins are actually increasing, right? Because margins and software is actually the most. It's practically nothing, right? In terms of cost. But obviously there's something, but it's, it's, it's sort of free money, right? It's building that, that user ecosystem. It's building that brand loyalty. When you buy a particular Apple, you most likely buy another product, right? It's the same thing. So if you buy Tesla, because of, you know, especially with the cult and fanboys that they love Tesla, I mean, it, they can they can have generate software revenues just of FSD, just of inbuilt apps, right? It's a computer within the, the, the wheels, right? It's a computer within the car. So the beauty of it is you can update just like how you update your phone, right? So you update software. So you, you know, you want this uh, premium version, then you have to pay a subscription, you know, basis or whatever. Call it a freemium model, right? Whatever it is, like the the end, the, the possibilities are limitless in a way. So the if we talk about business model, it's actually similar to where Apple is going to be. And it's also similar to what Amazon is because Amazon, they got their core margins, core products at like, you know, less than 10% because, you know, it's, it's an e e-commerce platform. But then they acquired AWS, which is bringing in software revenues and, you know, ramping up the margins, right? Ramping up the margins because AWS is close to, you know, 30, 30 plus percent, right? So my point is they can definitely earn more with their net margins now at 10% and gross margin, uh, operating margin at 14%. Their software revenues, I mean, their software profits easily can achieve 30% similar to what, you know, we can use Apple and AWS as a benchmark, and that will eventually bring up the total profit margins. Now, the, the beauty is that legacy car makers, all they have is, you know, close to 10% margins or 15, I wouldn't even say 15%, it's more to like 10% or less net income margins, right? So they don't have that software aspect that's what we should be looking at. Right now, I'm trying to say, because they had no data. They had no financial data for value investors last time to be investing in them. But right now, they do. Right now, it's a, it's crazy. It's a huge breakthrough, right? So, yeah, I, I can go on and on about Tesla, you know, forever. But my point is this, we need to look at them at this way, right? So, let's see who's here. I'm a big fan, Jared. Awesome. Uh, good to know, Jared. <clears throat> You're a big fan of Tesla. Great, man. Uh, so where am I? Where am I? We achieved the highest quantity operating margin among all volume OEMs. EVs can be more profitable than combustion engine vehicles. They are more profitable right now than ICE. How long would it take? How long would it take Neo to be in this level? Okay. How long would it take? Ford to be in this level, they have been, they will have to go through tons of cash burn. Okay. I won't even be surprised if, you know, Ford goes bankrupt just to be fueling into the EVs. EV is not a, seriously, Elon, Elon Musk said it before. He's damn stressed when it comes to like, he finds it very hard to be owning an EV company. He's actually, he just said that I think last few months or some, you know, whatever. It is not easy. It, they are literally you know, making it harder for Entrance to punch in and attack to be, you know, to be attacking this company. So this is insane. This is seriously insane, right? Additionally, we generated 5.5 billion of gap net income. 5.5 billion of gap net income, guys. Quarter. Uh, no, no, that was uh, for the year. That was for the year, right? 2B for the quarter, 5B for the year. And 5B of free cash flow in 2021 after spending 6.5 B to build out new factories, right? Now they have 17 B in the back, right? To be rolling out full gigafactory at, you know, capacity of 300,000 or 400,000. It's, uh, you, you can literally buy three, they can literally buy three gigafactories cash. <laughs> three gigafactories in cash. So they don't need to work. My point is looking at a business point of view, they don't need to be relying on, you know, heavy financing anymore, which they can't, which they should. I mean, no one buys cash all the way, but my point is, you know, it's insane. 
this amount is insane, right? They're really reaching record profits, record cash flows, record free cash flows, record money in the bank. It's only going to grow. That's my point, right? It's self-sufficient. And we can see that in their cash flows. Maybe later we've got time, we can, you know, wrap it up. Shit, I don't even think we've got time. There's so many things to talk about, right? I wanted to update on the portfolio. I want to update a little bit of SoFi. But anyway, so ramping production at new factories, okay? But also by maximizing output from our established factories in Fremont and Shanghai. So they're not obviously, you know, they're still ramping up tons of, you know, vehicles from Shanghai. They're ramping up more, like 300,000 more on Model Y and whatnot. So that we're going to be expecting, because Shanghai is awesome. Shanghai broke through the inflection point. Shanghai was key to lower down their costs, to cater to the demand. And, you know, it's amazing. But if I've been following them since 2018 and 2019, okay? It's amazing because they are the only foreign country to be operating there without the government having their hands on their company. It's fucking amazing. They love Tesla, right? So, you know, that's in the past, but I'm just excited right now to be here today, to be sharing with you guys now is like just crazy. So FSD software remains one of our primary areas of focus. This FSD is, is a game changer. People are underestimating, like seriously, I get YouTubers, like I see YouTubers saying, okay, Amazon is a better buy versus Tesla in terms of valuation. Maybe he's right, but we need to talk about growth right now. Okay, Tesla, let's put it that way. Let's put it this way. Tesla can be the most profitable biggest company in the world by a mile let's put it that way okay i see them going at 10 trillion no problem 10 trillion no problem okay because fsd is insane robo taxi insane if they roll out bots which is very you know pretty sure they can do that i mean skynet days are coming guys right that's gonna be generate like imagine the replace you know no more shortage of labor right? More efficient world. Obviously, it'll put a lot of people out of business. I mean, out of jobs. So whoever is working in replaceable jobs right now, we got to be careful, right? <laughs> so it will slowly scale up, right? They are going to factory workers, making more automation. Now, I'm, probably, I'm probably thinking Elon is not going to be like, okay, I'm going to replace this job and that. But my point is, you know, our jobs are going to be replaced at the end of the day. Right, AI is going to be commanding so many shit, and we we will just have like we need to be earning our compounding our wealth right now. Let's put it that way, right? And how do we do that is by investing in you know our brick growers, our our high you know our high income yield in the stocks, our high growers, right? Our long term winners, right? Be piling on more shares for the future. It's as simple as that for the kids, for your kids, right? So we have to think about all of this. It's insane. Like it, no one, the gravity of the situation, as Elon Musk put it, like no one appreciates, seriously, what is happening. It's crazy. It's crazy. I can tell you right now, like Elon is dropping a lot of gems and he's like, imagine a road of fog, right? Elon is, he's clearing away the fog and saying, that's where we're going to be. Now, reading underlying, uh, un between the lines and the underlying fundamentals of this company, we would be, oh my God, it doesn't matter if I drop 20% from 800, right? It doesn't matter. I, I mean, that's my point of view. Don't copy me. But it doesn't matter because, again, if your money is in there for the long run and not hindering your cash flows and you know, your, your, your emergency funds, think of it as buying for your kids. I mean, this is insane, right? So over time, our software-related profit should accelerate our overall profitability. We said this just now. Currently, okay, let's put, that there are probably, you know, more than 3 million, I think, right? 3 million Tesla cars in the road right now, probably, because they've been selling all the way and they have a run rate of 1.2. Even if I take 1.22 million, 50% of that, which is, I mean, it's a no-brainer to be, to be, uh, having an FSD update, let's put it that way, right? So let me take a 50% on 1.22. Now, bear in mind, that's conservative because there's 3 million cars running around and all of them has that FSD function, right? It's it's a computer. You you click it, software, and they can, they can improve, right? That's how sexy it is. So if you take 600,000 
you times by 12,000 because they raised their price of FSD, right? From 10,000 to 12,000. And bear in mind, guys, they can do that. They have, they have pricing power. They can raise, rise it up by 2,000 and say, and people will still have to pay, right? So they have that command and brand loyalty, okay? So that's, again, looking at this business. But if you work out the revenues in relation to, you know, the total revenues in the year, that is going to contribute 15% of overall revenues. 15%, guys, right? So again, we are not looking at car companies. We're not looking at car revenues anymore. We're looking at software revenues. It's insane, okay? Now, uh, where was I? Sorry, I'm taking too long on this particular page. <laughs> While 2021 was a defining year, we believe we are just at very early stages of our journey. When we look at, uh, I want to, sh let me share something else. We talk about S curve, right? Um, I just want to show this a little bit. I'll stay on longer for the uh, for this live noise. So when we look at the S curve, and we talked about this before in the live right? When we look at S-curve, think about it. Where is Tesla right now? Where? Are they mature? Are they scale? Are they growth? Are they stock? If I was to put a position in them, they are in between growth and scale. See, they are still breaking inflection points. But the last hurdle was raising that money. We walk down memory lane, right? Going into, you know, Gigafactory Shanghai, those, in my opinion, were like the worst days of Tesla. And that's over. The balance sheet tells me it's over. The money that they have, you know, it tells me that they're over. The vision that Elon Musk tells me that there's better times ahead right now for this company. It's insane, right? So why am I trying to, why am I showing you this to you guys? Is that if we talk about valuing this company, and I think this is a better representation, right? I shared this before. So start, you got every inflection point, right? Strategic is either sustaining the momentum, stagnation, or, you know, obsolescence with basically going down. Then you got growth, then you got scale. They have been breaking through every inflection point. And right now, the biggest hurdle, in my opinion, is just the fucking supply chain disruptions at the moment for this year. Just to be keeping up with that 50% KGAR, right? Is what is stopping them is supply chain disruptions. I'm not afraid of demand. I'm not afraid of their product roadmap. I'm not afraid of the things that they can offer. It's insane, right? So this is why I want to share with, you know, this with you guys. Um, so let me just go back here. Very early stages. Now let's jump into the numbers, okay? Automotive revenues, Q4 at 15B, right? Gross margin at 30.6. Now 15B is 71% year over year. Insane, just on Q4 alone, Okay. Operating uh, total gap gross margin at 27%. That's a lot for a car company, right? Uh, operating expense. So what we need to do, guys, and if you guys find out, share it with me, right? Share it with me Toyota or BM or, you know, whatever Mercedes, whatever car company, Volkswagen, uh, they are gross margins and we can compare, right? Because people like to, oh, you know, I want to compare with a car company. Well, Tesla is not a car company, but okay, let's, you know, let's compare. Let's fight, Right. So operating expenses at 2.23 billion. Operating expenses at 2.23 billion, it raised up. Like, why is this so high from Q3? It's because of that 340 M CEO uh, award, uh, options award uh, reflected this quarter that Elon is supposed to have because they reached a milestone back in 2012 or something like that. So it raised by 50%. But let's say we take that out 340, we will have 1.9 B of, uh, you know, operating, operating expenses, OPEX, right? So that will be 40 plus percent year over year. As long as revenues are actually scaling up faster, right? Percentage is actually faster than, you know, revenues here, remember scaling, revenues here, oper OPEX here, right? So you got that margin there. So that means, well, what does that mean? It means expanding margins. It means growing company, right? It means scale. So income for operations is 2.6B, operating margin at 14.7. Okay, this is insane. So net income attributable gap-wise is 2.3 billion. Yep, 760% increase, right? So over the year, full year, we have automotive revenues at 47B, 73% year over year. 
we have a $1 trillion company growing at 73%. And we have, you know, we have Tattoo Chef, we have SoFi, we have all these companies growing at 30%, 40%. I mean, <laughs> when you ask me about growth companies and you ask me about stability, yeah, I invest in SoFi because there's a lot of upside, right? But think about it. Why shouldn't we put a lot of money in Tesla? I mean, is there less upside in Tesla? Yeah, maybe within a shorter time frame. But this recent quarter is telling me, shit, no. Possibilities are endless. Like, we can have a coffee. Seriously, I can go live now, right? In Like, uh, I can go live in five years having a coffee and just be laughing. Seriously, we, we can laugh together if we have invested in Tesla, we've done our duty, we have the same vision of Tesla, we will be laughing all the way in the bank in five years. Let me put, let me put it that way, right? So automotive gross margin at 29%, total revenues at 53B, which is 71%, okay, of, for the whole year. Total gap gross margin at 25%. Operating expenses at 7B. Now, why am I highlighting this? Is because we got, you know, for companies that are earning like probably 53 billion or like 60 billion, they will probably have OPEX at 12B easily. That's how, see, the reason why I'm trying to say that like Tesla is the, the biggest startup in the world is because startups normally, they have the characteristic of like making their companies lean, right? Like save this, save that. You know, I we need to ramp up on sales and marketing. We need to ramp up on this. And my point is they are so fucking lean. Why? Because Elon Musk always believes in efficiency. They're the most efficient car company in the US so, so far, right? In terms of uh, how many cars they can produce per footprint and for, per gigafactory footprint, that's number one. Number two is that they're so lean because they don't need to be simply hiring. And the, the beauty is they don't even need to spend on sales and marketing, guys, right? So I got my YouTube and uh, you know I can share it with the group if you guys want. I studied, you know, into, uh, I've been talking a little bit about this and into detail and why I think they're lean. And I was showing the sales and marketing costs. You can actually check that out. But that's insane. This is insane, right? So operating margin at 12.1% uh, for the full year, right? So net income attributable to common stockholders gap net income at 5.5B, which is 665% increase, right? So profitability wise, they achieve this level while incurring stock-based compensation expenses attributable to 2018 CEO award, okay? Which is 245. Now, 245 and the payroll tax that we mentioned, 340, that is 600M altogether, right? Why, why am I putting this out? Is because they can still achieve record profits and operating margin of 14% for that quarter, regardless of all of this, right? Even with this, they can achieve that. So that's good. So we got further per vehicle cost reduction. They reduced COGS, which is awesome. They uh, grow. They have more obviously growth in vehicle deliveries, improved profitability of automotive leasing, increase in SGNA. That's the negative factor, but it's just a one-off cost. So that's fine. Um, we got rising raw material, commodity logistics. Now this is the more concerning bit for Tesla, right? For this year, because uh, you got, supply chain disruptions you got inflation and raw materials going up so that's where we see these uh, sort of affecting the profitability of the business right so increased warranty and recall costs yeah uh cash you know 17.6 uh, b right now as we mentioned i won't go into detail on this like you know we can see that model 3 and y is ramping up 79 percent. okay that's good model 3 and y you know for the year nine hundred six thousand. Like they they again there, if we were to take a KGAR from 2017 to 2022, 2021, this right here is 50%. I, I would say 60% KGAR right now. 60%. Now, Elon Musk said that they'll be comfortably, comfortably growing at 50% KGAR. That's easy for him. Easy. Right? So that's the, that's the thing. Uh, Tesla, your analysis and Jeremy's. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Jared. Do you have any thoughts on ISRG? Hmm. I will need to check that out. I will need to check that out. I don't think we have you know, time for this live right now, but uh, I, will, I will check it out for you, brother. Uh, so where was I? Total end of year operating these vehicle count. Okay. So 
We saw continuation of global supply chain, transportation, labor, and other manufacturing challenges limiting our ability, but yet they can still have record profits to run our factories at full capacity. Okay. Bills are model wise started in late 2021 at Gigafactory Texas. Uh, yeah. Uh, after final certification of Austin made Model Y, we plan to start deliveries to customers. Fremont Factory achieved record production. Then they plan to scale beyond 600,000 per year. That's fucking awesome, right? In Shanghai, local production is essential for reducing the cost per vehicle. Europe finalizing the manufacturing permit from local authorities, which will allow us to start delivering German-made vehicles in Europe. German-made, right? German is, you know, efficiency at its best. Um, in terms of, you know, tech and operations, right? So this is good. Now, when we look at market share of Tesla, I'm thinking, holy shit. You're reading the story of this guy and you're thinking, okay, all they have to do, seriously, all they have to do is to get 2.5 or even a 5% market share, which is very possible with FSD. Seriously, with FSD rolling around, their market share won't be 5% anymore. It'll be fucking 10%, right? Let's put it that way. But think about it, 2% of market share and yet they can still be profitable. Still, they can be lean. Everything, like Elon is crazy. He is an engineer. He's a genius. He's a, you know, whatever you want to call it. I mean, he, he's a businessman. He's a business owner and he, he knows how to run his company. He knows how to make it lean. He knows how to please investors. This guy's a fucking genius. We should be investing in geniuses this, you know, at our lifetimes. Let's put it that way, right? So the story I'm trying to paint to you guys is that they have 1.5% market share in China and Europe, 2% in US and Canada, 2, two whatever. That's all they need. <laughs> That's all they need, right? Imagine if that market share grows to 5%. Everything will be double up. Their forward PEs will be 30 or I won't be surprised if it's 20, right? So... Autopilot and FSD will successfully increase the number of FSD better vehicles from a couple of thousand, 2,000 to 60,000, right? FSD. Uh, vehicle delivery growth, one of the best in a decade. Well, not really a decade, like 2018, okay? Since 2018, all the other, you know, guys are below, like, below 50% and uh, on average, Tesla is probably 60% KGAR right now, right? Vehicle software... So I released the new, oh I didn't I didn't highlight this why did I not highlight this anyway I'll do that another time uh control menu and support a dark mode appearance additional features blind spot okay oh that's why I mean I wasn't important like okay I wasn't important like revenue generating stuff right so and whatever whatever is critical so manufacturing is Tesla's critical core competency which is good while EVs were often deemed structurally unprofitable due to expensive batteries we were convinced that manufacturing innovation purpose built vehicles and factories would solve cost concerns uh, including large casting structural battery pack 4680 cells and many others should help us continue to minimize our product costs see as an investor I'm thinking hey I'm sitting around and saying, okay, Elon, minimize your cost right now, okay? Scale your revenues. Give me, give me some, you know, a hint of your FSD so that I can earn, you, I can, you can bring shareholder value, right? So they have everything. They have everything right now. Elon is literally pleasing investors just with everything as a business, right? So energy storage is growing. Uh, we expect to achieve 50% annual growth in vehicle deliveries this is nothing i mean elon says that he can do that comfortably you know i believe him the rate of growth will depend on our equipment capacity operational efficiency and the capacity and stability of the supply chain our own factories have been running below capacity below capacity and yet they can have record profits right for several quarters as supply chain become became the main limiting factor which is likely to continue through 2022 that is why the stock fell off after earnings. Stupid, right? I mean, 2021, they'll be facing this shit. 2022, who's to say, I mean, will things get better in terms of supply chain? Yeah, it will. They're going to be facing the same shit in 2022. And knowing Tesla, they'll be able to break through, right? I mean, with whatever Elon is doing and the team is doing, right? So we have sufficient liquidity to fund our product roadmap, long-term capacity expansion. They do. They can literally play off, you know, two gigafactories in cash. Profit to reduce the cost of manufacturing operations over time with acceleration of software-related profits. See, that's the, that's the thing that 
you, you know, and we got analysts here talking about, okay, supply chain might disrupt them, but why aren't you talking about acceleration of software-related profits? Why? It's insane. Why can't you talk about that? Because that is a huge driver of contribution to revenues, right? So, you know, and this can say whatever they want. And in fact, it's better. It's better to have FUD and Tesla because, you know, when stocks go down, that's where we, right, we've been building convictions, we buy. So I'm going to be skimmed through the photos. And yeah, so this is flywheel effect in play, right? This is flywheel effect from losing money to gaining money, gaining money. You see that gap? That gap is insane. That gap is insane at these times, right? So what is going to happen in 2022? 50% Kagar. What is going to happen in 2023 when FSD rolls out? 50% Kagar. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, so I don't know. Call me. <laughs> don't be. I'm not hyping up the stock. Like when I talk about Tesla, I can talk all day, right? Uh, so, you know, we got a company that has low operating expenses. The keyword is lean, right? Low capex, lean, mean money making machine, okay? Self reliant and cash generating, operating leverage at its best, right? What do we, I mean, what does it mean by operating leverage? We got companies that are, you know, pumping up sales and marketing, pumping up GNA, right? More stuff because of more revenues. That makes sense. More gigafactories, more stuff. But every single gigafactory that they have is all lean. They, they know the efficiency. They know the system. All, all they need to do is just run through the system, right? Run whatever is in place and just repetition, right? Repetition. So when you got system in place, man, you know, automation, expect them to be having lower costs, right? So operating leverage at its best. Low marketing means organic sales. Again, if you go through the 10Q, you, uh, third quarter, right? They haven't released the 10Q for fourth quarter you will see that they, are, they, they have no SNM. They park SNM in SGNA. So that's how insane this company is, right? Lean. So we got operating cash flows going up, free cash flows going up. Net income at this stage, adjusted EBITDA obviously higher. Uh, for trailing 12 months, we got net income in this way and just like EBITDA also going up, which is crazy. Operating cash flow, huge already. Free cash flow after minus in capex at 5.5 B, right? So you got a crazy company, you got a cash cow, you got you know generating revenues, record profits, right? So let's take a look a little bit on their balance sheet. Okay. Now, and this is why I think that's amazing. Um, anyway, so we got cash and cash equivalents at 17 B as of the latest quarter. 17 B. We got total current assets at 27B, okay? Now think about it. The property, plant, and equipment that is deemed as assets in them that is worth the value, their cash is similar to how much they have in property, plant, and equipment, <laughs> right? And they will improve as we go along. It will improve because the more net income, the lesser capex that they spend, the you know they do not like Tesla is one of those companies that okay you have an order I will make it for you if you it's not like Toyota where they have to reduce costs by you know economies of scale and just producing 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 they don't do it that way you got an order right we won't be spending too much of our inventory our cash into the inventory so we got inventory at five point seven only and we got cash at seventy B right this is crazy so total current assets property plan and equipment at eighteen B Total assets is 62B, right? Total assets is 62B. That's healthy, right? So accounts payable, sorry. Accounts payable, we got uh, how much that should be paid in, you know, three months to, to a year at 10B, which is doable, right? In relation to the cash that they have and how much they're generating. We got total current liabilities at 19.7B versus total current assets of 27, right? So we got a surplus of 8B. Yep, 6, 7B, whatever. Now, the beauty is that when, see, why was I walking down memory lane as well? Is that they had 10B in debt at that time. 10B, because obviously they need to scale and ramp up in new gigafactories. But right now, fast forward to today, they just have debt, right? And finance leases, plus long-term liabilities, 
of you know 5.2 plus 3.5 that is just 8.7 b in long term debt 8.7 b in long term debt guys okay you you know how crazy this is like if you know how to read balance sheets you'll see current liabilities which is from 3 months to a year and we got total long term liabilities that you know long term right 30 years or whatever 15 years elon has been doing what he promised generating profits paying down debt investing in r&d right investing in automation and just fucking killing it by reinvesting in themselves that's what he's trying to do right he, they don't need to operate they, they don't need to own any other company all they need to do is just you know <laughs> invest in themselves right put money back into the company and i don't mean buying back the shares i mean in the form of paying off the debt so they can be more lean you know investing in automation and whatnot like this is insane right now the shareholders equity 62 minus 30 is at 32b is less than one right it's less than one the debt to equity ratio is less than one it's crazy right so that is the balance sheet and that's all i got yeah that's all i got right so we even if we look at cash flows, even if we look at cash flows, right, where we got operating cash from operating activities. So operating cash flow, did they say for a year though? No. Net income, no. Okay, so let's yeah, it's by the quarter, right? So let's okay. So operating cash flows at four point five b. Capex is at one point eight. So four point five minus one point eight, you got three. You got two. Two plus two point five b. Uh, free cash flow, right? So Tesla is, you know, a cash cow. Net cash used in activity investing activities is just 1.9. Uh, net cash flows from other debt activities is just their financing is actually less and less, right? Net repayments borrowings, 596 for the quarter. It's very small. These are very small figures, right? So that means that, you know, their financing activities is not a lot. They don't have to pay a lot in you know interest and debt installments. There's a lot of, there's not a lot of investing activities because it's, they are not they are not a company that's heavily reliant on a, acquisition. It's just they can be a growth monster themselves, right? So that's that's what I'm trying to paint out. And with the operating cash flow in relation to what you know how how much they spend on investing and financing, it's very healthy, right? So the I mean, they have the qualities of a value company right now, but it's not. Like, they're way more than a growth company right now. And yeah, this is my analysis. <laughs> this is where I'm looking at them as a business and I'm thinking it's crazy not to be owning a piece of this business, right? So yeah, that's what I have today, guys. Uh, so just a little update. Okay, we are over time, but it's okay. Let me just stop share and let me go through... Where was I? Okay, so a little update on the the public account, right? I have positions in... So I, I want to share a little bit on um, my thought process and what is happening, right? So basically, I made losses on... I made gains on HiMax for the month. HiMax, Coinbase, uh, and I made loss on LC. And this is, a, this is actually a sharing and something educational, if you, if you might that we should never buy just before earnings, right? So I had the conviction that LC will blow out earnings, which they did, right? Because I've been following them for a little bit. And, and I wanted to, the reason why I also seeing LC is because SoFi is reporting on March, right? SoFi is reporting on March. And I wanted to see how uh, LC's performance is. And it's really good news because I'm not afraid that SoFi is not going to blow out earnings in March. What I am afraid of is SoFi will reduce guidance on March. So that is a problem. That is a problem. And that's what happened to LC. When I bought LC, the, the shit thing is I can't do anything about it. I can't do anything about it because when I bought and pre-market, after market, after hours, it dropped by 25%. No, 9, 15% because they said that they lowered guidance. I'm like, shit. When pre-market the next day, it just dropped judges all the way to 25%. So I'm thinking, okay, you know what? I have to cut. I My cut loss was 10%, but I can't do anything about it. So this is why, guys, we never buy before earnings, right? I knew about this already. 
but I wanted to take, you know, maybe it's a bad role model. I mean, it's a bad sort of uh, uh, example that I'm actually giving out. So I'm sorry for that, but I'm, I'm transparent. You know, that's a bad move that I made. And, uh, and I, you know, the gains that I made on Hymax and Coinbase is actually just, you know, uh, I'm still profiting from those two trades because LC was, uh, you know, one of the bad trades, but I'm still profitable from that. Why is the whole account sort of negative uh, from 3,005 capital is because of this unrealized profit, right? The unrealized loss from SoFi. And I added in SoFi because, you know, they got a bank charter. And I mean, how the hell did I know that it would go into 10 bucks? I mean, 11 bucks, to, you know, close to 10 bucks right now. But think about it. When I think, you know, so this is the importance of uh, uh, building a conviction and build, having long-term price target right? And how convicted you are in this company. So perfect example is SoFi. Right now, their market cap is at 8.9B, right? Uh, SoFi, we stop. Okay, let's just, you know, quick one. So for SoFi is at 8.9B, 9B market cap. My projections tell me on a bad case scenario that they can be 30B in three years or four years, right? Especially with, without the bank chart. Now with the bank charter, where do we think they're going to be, right? So for me, it's just crazy money, but I don't go all in right now. I'm still going to be buying tranches. But the problem about this public portfolio is that the cash position that I have, I still want to remain healthy, which is to me is healthy, right? It's close to 50%, 40%. Uh, but this is, again, a reminder to everyone that, hey, don't be, you know, don't go all in because... Right now, times are gloomy in a macroeconomic status. Um, so we just got to be careful. And uh, as long as we build convictions for, you know, over the long run and price targets, then, you know, we'll be good. We'll be all good, right? So I still keep comfortable cash, 1.4, you know, uh, 1.4, I think is like 45%. I don't know. But we got unrealized so far, which I'm not, I'm not shaking, right? I'm not shaking. My worst case scenario, even if so far goes down to nine bucks, it'll still be, you know, with like, I'll still have equity of uh, uh, NLV, net liquidation value of probably 2.9K, which is okay, right? In a bad time, but I'll still have cash. The, 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 the question we should ask ourselves is, do we have cash and bullets to be you know, gaining what we have lost or unrealized loss, right? So yeah, this is a little update. And so far, it's just, whew, it's just crazy. Like the whole market is up, but so far it's down. <laughs> LC is going up. That's probably because they got hammered from you know 25%. Affirm is up 17%, but fucking so far is at you know minus two. So it's weird how the market works, but that's where we should be capitalizing. When the market seems cooler, I'm going to be just going on a trudge, right? If TA wise allows me to have an entry and if I see more weakness and you know the market gets cooled down all the way until March, I will be going in. I'll be going in, right? So Tesla and SoFi still remains to be my highest conviction stocks simply because of, you know, flywheel and whatnot. But it's crazy for me not to be adding another share. I don't want to be adding another share because like if I buy another one, it'll be, well, how much would it be now? I'll be adding 846. Well, it's actually not too bad. It's not too bad. But it'll be very heavy on long term. I want to be more flexible, like as what we said this year, right? But if Tesla keeps going down all the way into 600 or 700, I'll be adding more for sure. For sure. No brainer, right? So I'll depend on my, you know, monthly cash inflow on this portfolio and I'll just be, you know, I'll just keep on adding cash um, because again, I'm, hopefully you guys can sort of uh, emulate this, right? Like I'm, I'm thinking myself as a retail investor and, I mean, as a, as a guy who has probably 30K net worth or 5K net worth or 10K net worth. And I'm thinking, okay, I got a job. I can put in how much the X amount, which is 500. It's not too much. So I want to be adding more cash, right? So yeah, that's all I got today. Um, is there anyone here? Okay. Yeah, thank you, Jared, for your questions. Thank you for, you know, your comments, guys. Again, if you have, uh, you know, any stocks that you want to talk about, any, if you are investing in Tesla, investing in SoFi, let us know in the comments. Tag me, tag my name in, uh, you know, Facebook. Or if you're in a private group, you know, join a private group. 
And yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Oh, by the way, if you guys want me to talk about anything in terms of uh, any updates or any other stock, I can look in the ISRG or whatever it is for the next live. Shoot, right? Shoot in the comments. Again, if you're watching this live right now, you know, click hashtag live so that I know that you're watching. Uh, click hashtag replay if you're watching on replay. And yeah, hopefully you guys got some value out of this live. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.